With WOP, if we want to prove that D is empty, we should be showing as well that D does not contain a least element and as well as D does not contain arbitrarily small integers. That's why we have this statement right here. Knowing that all the K in the set D would start from 1 until positive infinity, it would mean that D does not contain arbitrarily small integers. If you want to review about WOP or to have a discussion about these three types of sets here, just click down the gear icon there at the top so you will be redirected to that video. We are done showing that D does not contain arbitrarily small integers. So for us to show that D is empty, we have one more item left and that is to show that D does not contain a least element. To show that D does not contain a least element, let's have still here proof by contradiction. Suppose D does contain a least integer. So here, suppose in contrary that D contains a least integer, say small d. Knowing that D is already the least integer, consequently one unit lesser than D or D minus 1 would not be an element of D. Moreover, it is also clear that D should not be equal to 1 knowing that 1 can satisfy this one right here or the expression here. Note that again, set D will have all the elements that will not be equal to this expression right here. And since 1 is equal to that expression there, then 1 shouldn't be an element in this set here implies that Rd, which is in this set D here, should not also be equal to 1. And that would give us as well that d should only be greater than 1. So again, since all the elements of the set d here have all positive integers, meaning 1, 2, 3, until positive infinity, knowing that as well 1 cannot be an element to the set, hence our d here, which is an element of that set d, should just be greater than 1. Now, Knowing that d minus 1 is not an element of d, it would mean that d minus 1 here would satisfy the negation of this expression or which was the n times n plus 1 all over 2. Since d minus 1 satisfy this expression here, we can substitute d minus 1 to our n's here Thus, we'll have d minus 1 times d minus 1 plus 1 all over 2, or which would be the expression right here. Knowing that we can cancel out the minus 1 and plus 1 here, we're left at the numerator d times d minus 1 all over 2, which is the expression right here. Simplifying the numerator, then we'll have d squared minus d all over 2. And now, if we add d to both sides of the equation, we'll have this. So we have plus d at the left side of the equation and plus d at the right side of the equation. Combining the fraction here, for the benefit of others, since we now have d squared minus d all over 2 plus d, combining this fraction, we'll have d squared minus d plus 2d all over 2, which is the expression right here. Simplifying the numerator, we'll have d squared plus d 
or specifically that's plus 2d or positive 2d minus d which is just a positive d here and so our numerator here will just be d squared plus d all over 2 or that would be the expression right here factoring out d to our numerator we'll have d times d plus 1 all over 2 or the expression right here notice that it will try to rewrite solution right here to a final equation it would look something like this 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus until d would be equal to d times d plus 1 all over 2 right left side of the equation equals right side of the equation these two right here Notice as well that D actually satisfies the negation of this expression right here, which was the N times N plus 1 all over 2. Since D would actually be equal to this D times D plus 1 all over 2, it would also mean that D would satisfy this expression right here. Consequently, this D should not be an element of the set D right here because again, this set D here will contain elements that will not satisfy the expression here. So yes, because of this solution right here, it gives us a conclusion that D should not be an element of the set D right here but this is a contradiction because D is actually an element of the set D here in fact we assumed that small d right here is a least integer of the set D here but with this hypothesis with this assumption we arrive at the contradiction contradiction would be this contradicting statement that D is an element of the set D. And the conclusion that we arrived right now, which is that D is actually not an element of D. Knowing that these two statements here are really contradicting that an element is impossible to be inside at the same time not inside or not an element of a set D. So, since we arrive at the contradiction here that D is the least or a least element in D, it would also mean that D does not contain a least integer. Earlier, we discussed that since considering this assumption that D contains a least integer would give us a contradiction here, it would mean that this assumption is false. That is, D does not contain a least element here. So since we also discussed earlier that D as well does not contain arbitrarily small integers, we have already proven that D actually is empty. Or that is, we won't have any element to this set. Consequently, this expression works for all positive and integers. And so, we have proven this statement right here. Alright, so please try proving the second equation right here, the second series right here, and let me know if you're having problem in doing that proof. Alright? I'll be having another video that will discuss principle of mathematical induction this time, and that will try to prove the same series, but by that time, we will be using principle of mathematical induction. 
So click the next video right here to be redirected to that video or to the playlist containing that video. Alright, thank you.